Okay, let's take a look at some basic integrals using the trig functions. Now, before we start with the antiderivatives, let's first of all take a look at the derivatives again. The derivative of the sine is the cosine. The derivative of the cosine is negative of the sine. The derivative of the tangent is the secant squared. The derivative of the cotangent is the negative cosecant squared. The derivative of the secant is the secant tangent. And finally, the derivative of the cosecant is the negative cosecant cotangent. Now, if you're going to find the antiderivatives, each one of these is just the opposite of this one. So if the derivative of the sine gives you the cosine, then the antiderivative of the cosine gives you the sine of x, but don't forget to add a plus c. Now going to the next one. Uh, if the derivative of the cosine gives you the negative of the sine, then the integral of the negative of the sine would give you the cosine. But what we'll do on these, on the three of them that actually have negatives, uh, the cosine, the cotangent, and the cosecant, rather than using the negative of the sine, we'll use the positive on all these. So what that does, it takes the negative from this side, moves it over to this side. So if these three were negative, uh, cosine, cotangent, and cosecant, then their antiderivatives will be negative here. But we'll start with positives all in this column. So the integral of the sine gives you the negative of the cosine plus c. The integral of the secant squared gives you the tangent. Uh, antiderivative of the cosecant squared gives you the negative of the cotangent. The antiderivative of the secant tangent gives you the secant. And finally, the antiderivative of the cosecant cotangent gives you the negative of the cosecant. So there are the basic antiderivatives. Now let's take a look at how to use them. They're actually fairly easy to use. We'll look at a few basic examples to start with. So to begin with, let's take a look at this problem here. The, find the antiderivative of 4 times the cosine of x. Well, that will be equal to, first of all, you've got the constant 4. Then look at your list. Uh, the antiderivative of the cosine is the sine of x plus c. So the antiderivative of the cosine is the sine of x, then tack on a plus c, and you are finished. Uh, let's take a look at the next example. You've got the constant 3. Now, for the antiderivative of the sine, look back at your list. The antiderivative of the sine is the negative of the cosine. So this will become the negative of the cosine of x, and then tack on a plus c. Now, in general, what you'll do is this, is move the negative out in front, so the final answer would look like this. Negative 3 times the cosine of x plus c. Okay, next example, you can have combinations of trig and non-trig in the same problem. So what we'll do on this one, we'll make it be, uh, you, first of all, you've got the constant 6. Now, going back to the list, the antiderivative of the sine is the negative of the cosine. So the antiderivative of sine would be the negative of the cosine of x, then plus, now the antiderivative of x squared using the power rule will be x cubed divided by 3, and then finally tack on a plus c for the entire thing. And then you probably want to go ahead and move that negative out in front. So negative 6 times the cosine plus, and if you wanted to, 1 third of x cubed plus c, and you would be done. Okay, let's take the next examples. Um, <clears throat> first of all, you've got the constant 5 in this one, so I've got the constant 5. Then, um, now what I need is the antiderivative of the secant tangent. We'll go back to your list, and the antiderivative of the secant tangent is the secant squared. So I'll put change this into the secant squared of x plus c, and you're done. So the antiderivative of the secant tangent is the secant squared. Now on this one, think of this as being, rather than dividing by 4, think of it as multiplying times 1 fourth. So this would be 1 fourth of, now you need the antiderivative of the cosecant squared. So the antiderivative of the cosecant squared is the negative of the cotangent. So this is going to be times the negative 
of the cotangent of x plus c. And then as we've done before, go ahead and move the negative out in front. So this will be negative one-fourth of the cotangent of x plus c. Okay, for the next one, um, you've got a constant negative 3, so we'll put the negative 3. Now you need the antiderivative, the of, antiderivative the cotangent cotangent. of the cosecant cotangent is the negative of the cosecant of the negative of the cosecant of x. So I'll change this into the negative of the cosecant of x plus c. Now for the final answer, when I multiply, two negatives make a positive, so I would have 3 times the cosecant of x plus c, and I'm done. And then finally, one more involving the secant squared. First of all, think of dividing by 2 as multiplying by 1 half, so you'll have 1 half of... Now, for the antiderivative of the secant squared, look at your list, and the antiderivative of the secant squared is the tangent of x. So I'll change that secant squared into a tangent of x. plus c, and basically you're done. I could rewrite that as one half the tangent of x plus c. So there are some basic antiderivatives. Now let's take a look at a couple more, and on this next series, we'll take a look at some. In some cases, you have to use trig identities in order to solve a problem. For, so for all the students who wondered Back when you were taking trigonometry, where are we ever going to use this identity stuff? Well, this is where you're going to use it. So the idea is, to solve all three of these problems, you're going to have to uh, use a trig identity. Now, first of all, I don't. if I look at my list, I've got the tangent divided by the cosine. Well, looking at my list, I don't have a, an integral for the tangent divided by the cosine, so I've got to change this into something that I do have an antiderivative of. So what I'll do is looking at my list one more time, I have an uh, antiderivative of the secant tangent. So if I look at my list here, I can change this into this, the antiderivative of, and I'll scoot this so I'll make it be 1 over the cosine of x, and I'll take this tangent of x and move it off to the side here, times the tangent of x uh, dx. But 1 over the cosine is the secant, if you remember your trig derivatives, or trig identities, secant times the tangent of x dx. So now what I've done, I've changed it into something that is on the list. So if I look at my list, the antiderivative of the secant tangent is the secant of x plus c, and I'll be finished. So that will turn into the secant of x plus C, and you are done. So the trick here is to uh, put parentheses around this. The trick here is to take the tangent, move it off to the side. That gives you 1 over the cosine. 1 over the cosine is the secant. That gets you to something in the list you can take the antiderivative of. Sometimes it takes a little bit more work, so let's start with this one. <clears throat> let's find the antiderivative of now, first of all, you might remember 1 minus the sine squared, if you remember from your identities, is the cosine squared. So I can change that into the cosine squared of x divided by the cosine of x, then this entire thing times the secant of x dx. Well, the next thing that will happen is um, I've got a cosine squared in the top, a cosine in the bottom. So the one cosine in the bottom will cancel out one of the cosines in the top, and that leaves me with uh, the antiderivative of the cosine of x <clears throat> times the secant of x. But again, this still doesn't agree with anything on the list, so you keep going. This will become, now I've got the antiderivative of the cosine of x, and remember, the secant is 1 over the cosine, so I can change that into 1 over the cosine of x. So again, use your trig identities, dx.
Well, now what happens is you've got a cosine at the top, cosine at the bottom, they cancel out, and that reduces the entire thing down to the antiderivative of the constant 1 times dx. So what happens, this problem changed from a trig problem into a non-trig problem. Now the antiderivative of a constant is just the constant times x, so this will just become 1x plus c, or x plus c, and you are finished. So sometimes you get some unusual results. If you use your trig identities, the problem may turn from a trig problem into a non-trig problem. And let's take a look at one more. I've got the antiderivative of, <clears throat> now again, I'm going to use one of the old identity tricks of changing everything to sine and cosine um, because I don't have an antiderivative for this. So the cosecant, if you remember, is 1 over the sine of x. The cotangent of x is the cosine of x over the sine of x. And finally, uh, the secant of x is 1 over the cosine of x. So change them all to sine and cosine. Now the next thing that you'll notice is you've got a cosine on the top and a cosine on the bottom, so this cosine here will cancel out this cosine here. So what that leaves you is the antiderivative of, now you've got one sine times sine is sine squared, so this will turn into 1 over the sine squared of x dx. Okay, so that will be equal to, now you have to kind of keep looking back at your derivative list, so let's do that. Let's go back to the derivative list, and um, what we've got is we don't have, we don't have an antiderivative for 1 over the sine squared, but if you look through the list, uh, you do have one for the cosecant squared. So we'll take advantage of that, and 1 over the sine squared is the cosecant squared. So the idea is you just have to play around with these things <clears throat> until you get them to agree with something in the list. Now once we've done that, the antiderivative of the cosecant squared is the negative of the cotangent plus c. So this becomes the negative of the cotangent of x plus c. And if you want to, you can put this in parentheses here. And you'll wind up with that for an answer. So the idea is change it all to sine and cosine, cancel out what you can, and then you have to manipulate it until you get it to agree with something in the list. Once you've got it to agree with something in the list, write down the final answer. So there's a couple of trig uh, problems involving identities. Okay, now a couple of final examples. Let's just take a look at this one. Um, I've got uh, the integral of the cosecant squared plus the cosine, and if you run through this, um, you can actually just make two separate identities. So first of all, find the antiderivative of the cosecant squared, which is the negative, the negative of the cotangent of x, and then plus the antiderivative of the cosine, which is the sine of x. Uh, and put a plus C, and you are finished. So if you've got one that looks like this, with two of them added together, just find each antiderivative separately. And let's try one more. Uh, you could have a trig one combined with a non-trig one. So this would be the constant, 4. Then the antiderivative of the sine is the negative of the cosine. And then, uh, now I'll find the antiderivative of this one. So this is the antiderivative of the trig one. Now I'll find the antiderivative of the non-trig one. Well, I've got x to the 2 thirds, so I'm going to go ahead and add 1 or 3 thirds to that. So this will become x to the 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds plus c. So to write the final answer, first of all, move the negative out in front. So negative 4 times the cosine of x plus, and take the fraction, turn it upside down, that'll give you 3 fifths of x to the 5 thirds plus c, 
and you are finished. So it looks like that. So there's a few basic examples using uh, trig functions with basic interval.